Hello and welcome back to Socially Distant Discover Nature. Now in last week's episode I talked about all my pond misdemeanours and this week we're going to have a look to see if I'm going to pond jail that I hope is a place I made up in my head and not reality or else I'm probably going to be in trouble. But first, a reprieve. The titles. Before we get on to ponds, just a very brief catch-up, and we've got a question sent in by Glenn, and he found this weird kind of fluffy substance hanging down from trees in his garden, and he wanted to know what it was. Now, at first glance, it does look like fungal growth on the trees, but if it is indeed kind of fluffy, then it's much more likely to be a small colony of woolly aphids. Aphids are true bugs, they are green fly, black fly, that sort of stuff, sap sucking insects, and woolly aphids secrete a weird substance out of wax glands, and so you end up with this kind of fluffy detritus coating the trees where there's colonies of woolly aphids. We've also heard from Vicky, who used to be a St. Nick's Ranger, Warden, Youth Club runner, all-round amazing person, and they've sent in this incredible picture via Instagram of a five-spot burnet moth. So uh, a burnet moth is one that is out during the day. You can see them flitting around, often like a kind of red haze, and then they settle into this sort of metallic black colour with red spots. Count the number of spots on each wing. So five spot Burnet Moth have five spots on each of the wings or each of the, the four wings. Now on to the pond stuff. So the first thing I did when starting out on pond dipping is get my trusty white tray, which we can, uh, you can see the dark creatures contrasting against it. Fill up with water from the pond, not a tap. That's a big no-no. Tap water contains all sorts of uh, stuff that interferes with pond creatures. Fill it up from the actual pond. The other main piece of equipment for pond dipping is a pond dipping net, such as this one. I didn't use this one because it was too big for the pond. As I said last week, one of the problems with the pond is it's very small. Too small for this net. Too small for the other net as well, but it's the best I could do. So I had to poke around with the net, swished it around as best as I could in the very cramped area, then get the net out, tip it upside down, empty the contents into the white tray that's full of pond water, give it a swish around, and then I left it to settle. So the idea is you're waiting for stuff to stop moving, leaves and swirling around with the currents of the water, and then once it's settled, anything that's then moving still is moving of its own accord, which means it's probably alive. And my first shock was that there was indeed something alive in the pond. You can see these wiggly little creatures here. These are mosquito larvae, so baby mosquitoes. Eggs have been laid in the pond, hatch out into these larvae things, which will eventually metamorphosize into the adult mosquitoes that we know and love. They're really easy colonizers, so they could have arrived after I'd obliterated the pond, and they could have arrived recently. Um, they're not a great sign of a healthy ecosystem if it's just them. So I pressed on, and I found something else. This red creature is a bloodworm, or a non-biting midge larvae. So it will eventually become a, a little in adult form, a tiny little fly that can't bite humans. It's perfect food for bats, swallows, all that sort of stuff. It's kind of good that they're there. Again, it's not a great side of a healthy ecosystem if you've just got these in the pond. More interesting creatures found a tiny little freshwater shrimp, part of the Amphipoda order. Very kind of flattened on its, on its sides, can swim quite fast. And I don't even know if you can see it in the footage because I haven't reviewed it properly, but this tiny little creature, which is a spring tail, which has kind of got a mechanism for flicking itself in the air, and they live on the, the surface of the water. Very small. 
None of these, none of these creatures are really a sign of a, a flourishing ecosystem. Potentially, there could be a sign of a. I'll say it, a rubbish pond. However, I did start to get my hope up, however briefly, when I spotted a kind of weird, I don't know how you describe it, almost a diamond-shaped creature wiggling around that looked a bit like a, a beetle larvae. Larva. A baby beetle. Very useful piece of equipment is the FSC pond, well, freshwater name trail. Good identification chart. All sorts of creatures on. And I saw something that looked a bit like a beetle larvae. But I, oh, I wasn't sure, and then it, I lost it. There was also um, what I can only describe as a dead thing. I couldn't tell whether it was a dead creature or a shed skin. I wasn't entirely sure what it was. It looked a bit like a damselfly nymph. And then they had one of those tails, the uh, coral lamellae, the gills, external gills. I don't know, I'll, I'll stare at the footage and maybe I'll whack a name on screen in text of, of what I think it might be, but... I don't know. It seemed, it seemed all was lost. Ah. That is the sound that I'm talking too much. And also it's raining, which means the audio is probably stuffed. And then it happened. Just when I'd given up hope, out from underneath a floating leaf, crawled the jackpot. I witnessed a pondmus miracle. A dragonfly nymph. In that pond! That terrible, terrible, awful pond that I destroyed has a dragonfly nymph living in it. Possibly more than one, who knows? Didn't find more than one, but I found one. It's an incredible find. It's a, a top predator. It's a sign of a healthy ecosystem. You got that there? It's, it's eating everything below it, it's, the ecosystem is supporting it. It's mind-boggling. Absolutely mind-boggling. And I am very, very pleased. And sp spurred on by that, that victory, that find, I went back with my net and I went dipping in the centre of the pond. I found something else! I found a water beetle! I know! I, I am um, speechless. A natural water beetle, um, black, oval shape. Don't get them confused with bugs. Beetles have elytra, wing cases that meet in a straight line neatly down the back. Yeah, incredible. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. And then finally, just to get some, I don't know, confirmation, validation, uh, and to repay my terrible crimes I've committed against the Freshwater Habitats Trust, I went on their website and I uh, downloaded their big pond dip identification form, which I urge you all to do. Great little citizen science project. You can identify the creatures you find in the pond. Each one is assigned a score to determine how healthy, how good a quality your pond is. So I only found a, a dragonfly larva worth 10 points, water beetle was worth 5 points, freshwater shrimp 5 points, uh, what are adorably known as wigglies, which includes the mosquito larvae, the non-biting midge larvae, that's only worth 1 point, see they're not a sign of a healthy ecosystem. Add them all up, 16 points for my pond, and if we look on their little chart, it says your pond is good. So a score of 6 to 30 gets you a, a credit of your pond is good. And I got 16. My little weird little puddle in my garden got 16, which is slap bang in the middle of your pond is good. So there you have it. My pond is good. The Habitats, Freshwater Habitats Trust say so. It's official. So I'm going to get that framed, stick it on the wall. Yeah, that's all for this week. If you've got access to a pond, go do some pond dipping. Have fun. See what your score is and enjoy it. And if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go get My Pond Is Good printed on a t-shirt. Goodbye. I forgot to tell you, next week's episode, if all goes according to plan, will be about leafcutter bees, because they are out there.